G'day guys, Jason here. Welcome back to my fish room. So in this week's video, we're going to be doing my full fish room tour for the year 2021. And that is because I've passed a little bit of a milestone. And that milestone is I've reached over 1,000 subscribers. I really can't believe it, honestly. This time last year, I had a little over 100 subscribers and now I have over 1,000. I really wanna thank each and every one of you guys who have supported me on this journey so far. When I started this fish room uh, vlog channel, uh, back in mid-2019, I really didn't think a little over a year later I'd have over 1,000 people following me on this journey. The whole channel has evolved from basically building this fish room with this rack to what you see today. And hey, a little over a year and a half, um, it's become this. So I just again want to thank each and every one of you guys for your support over the last year and a half. And that's because if it wasn't for you guys, I wouldn't be producing content without your support. You guys motivate me to continue to produce content and hopefully informative content for you guys. It takes quite a lot of time uh, to dedicate, you know, producing one video, even one video a week. There are some channels out there that produce daily content. I can't believe how they do it. And my hat goes off to you guys because that's unbelievable. That's incredible. I'm trying to produce weekly content and hopefully again, informative and enjoyable content for you guys. So thank you once again for supporting me on this journey so far. Really, really do appreciate it. Anyway, I think I've talked enough now about this. Let's get into the video, my full fish room tour for 2021. Guys, if you've been on my channel for a while now, you would know this tank very well because I show it so often. Uh, that's because these guys are really interesting and I love them. These are my Lamprologus Ocellatus Gold. These are my breeding trio, and they are quite the character. As you can see there, the male is interacting with the two females. He's in the center there going over that rock in the middle, and his two girls are at the front of the tank. Now, the interesting thing with these guys is that recently, the female on the right here, this little girl here, you can see her, she's not scared of my finger in front of, right in front of her, and you can see the size of her compared to the size of my finger, she's quite small. She recently took up residence in this shell. She used to be way at the back, back corner over here. And uh, for some reason, she decided to move to the front of the tank. Quite possibly because that is where I feed them. I feed them right here on this side of the tank. So she wasn't silly. She's moved to the front of the tank because of the access of food. And it's better for her babies because they've got more access to the food rather than the very back corner of the tank over there. So she's, it's the first time she's spawned in the front of the tank here. And this female on the left here, this one right here, she's been at the front of the tank for quite a while. You can see she's not scared of my finger either. She'll happily attack it and try and bite me through the glass, defending her fry. And thankfully with these guys, they spawn at the same time. Both females spawn like clockwork almost every two weeks with the male at the same time. All their fry get mixed together. I was told when I purchased them that they only spawn in pairs, but that's not true because as you can see here, I have them in the trio and they've been spawning quite happily for well over a year now. There are a heap load of fry in this tank all over the bottom of the tank and they're becoming more and more adventurous. They're about uh, just past a week old free swimming. And you can see them darting around the tank there. And when I put the light on, first as I put the light on in the morning, the, the babies will just rush inside the shell. They'll, they'll stick around the shell until the mother feels comfortable with them being out, at, out and about in the tank. And as the lights stay on longer and longer, they'll venture further and further away from the shell. These guys, pretty aggressive for Shelly's, one of the most aggressive shell dwellers out there. These ones aren't tolerating more than one generation of fry in their tank anymore. So in about a week, I'm gonna have to pull these fry out because they're gonna wanna spawn again and pop them into a grow tank. So uh, if I leave them in for too long, they will end up eating their fry. I know some Okies don't do that, but mine have started to do that. They just will not tolerate more than one generation of fry in their tank. Again, mine are doing that, yours might not do that. They're all kind of individual. They all have their own little characters and uh, yeah, unfortunately mine have developed that trait. But uh, yeah, there's my Lamprologus Ocellatus Gold Tank. So this is my Neo Lamprologus Brevis Sunspot Tank. I have an adult trio in here, and you can see the female and the large male right in the center of frame just popped out of their shell. And I actually have the other female in this shell right here for some reason. Now, the, the, the reason being that I find that interesting is that she has been at that shell right here for the past year. And in the last week or two, she's taken up residence in some of the shells in the front here. 
kind of like my Lamprologus Ocelotus gold female. Uh, she's moved to the front of the tank. I'm not sure if that's because she wants more access to the food, easier access to the food, because I obviously feed them at the front of the tank, not all the way at the back of the tank. Could be because of that, or she just wants to get closer to the male. So it could be one of those reasons, or both. And also, as you can see, there are quite a few fry in this tank, and they are quite large. I haven't moved them out of this tank, purely because I want to sell my breeding trio. I will show you the fry that they have spawned for me. They're really, really good spawners, and uh, I've bred hundreds of these guys. Beautiful fish, beautiful shape, very interesting fish to watch, uh, the way they interact with each other. The male sleeps in that shell that you saw the female just pop out of. He stays with her the majority of the time, but he does have his other girl in this shell at the moment, and the two females fight. He'll break up the fight, send one female to her shell, the other female to the other shell, and the fight's over. But anyway, on to the next tank. I do showcase this tank quite a bit on my channel, and this is my Judochromus Regani tank. Love these guys. You can see the juvenile fry at the front of the tank. The adult parents are right in the center of frame, right at the back of the tank. I think they've got another clutch of fry. I need to get these guys out into their own grow-out tank so they don't eat their fry. Because unfortunately, these guys have eaten past spawns. I've left them in here too long. Learning my lesson with these guys. I thought they'd be okay and would step breed, but unfortunately, yeah, they've been preying on their younger brothers and sisters. So I'm gonna to have to move these guys out. But uh, yeah, really nice striking fish. I love the Regani. The largest of all the Judochromus uh, species out there is the Regani. And uh, my pair are quite small. The interesting thing with the pair that I have in here is that they've accepted one of their first fry. One of the oldest fry ever. I've kept it in this tank, I haven't sold it because they've accepted it and they're becoming quite a trio. And that youngest fry, you can see it right in the center of frame there. It helps the parents defend the youngest generation of fry from the current generation that are in here. So uh, for some reason, they've accepted that one Judochromus regani to be near their clutch of eggs. And yeah, I, I, I just don't know why they've accepted that one. There's been probably four or five generations that have been moved out of this tank. And that guy, for some reason, the parents tolerate it with it, their latest clutch of eggs and they've never kicked it out. So there you go. And that's the interesting thing with this tank. But anyway, got to get on with this fish room tour. So on to the next tank. So this tank has featured on my channel quite a bit lately and it's got a bit of a mix of fish in here. So it's got my Neolamprologus Brevis Sunspot, my Judochromus Transcriptus Gombi and my Alto Lamprologus Black Calvus in here. And yeah, they, all the fish in here really aren't doing much at the moment. And that's why they're all together. So I've got four Brevis males and um, I've got four Transcriptus Gombi in here. They haven't spawned for me in well over a year. And unfortunately, my Alto Lamprologus Black Calvus haven't spawned for me either. And that's why they're in here. And I don't think they're a pair either. I think they're either two males or two females and they're constantly fighting, unfortunately. So all the fish in here uh, are kind of uh, on hold. I um, really do intend on selling the Brevis. I uh, just have not gotten around to doing that. Uh, but I do want to try and breed the Transcriptus Gombi properly. They need to go in their own tank by themselves, the pair, I think. And then maybe I'll be able to spawn them. Uh, the interesting thing with the Transcriptus Gombi is that the largest Gombi in this tank recently switched partners with the smallest Gombi in the tank. So uh, I'm hoping now that it's made that switch that I will get some spawning activity. Because it was with another Gombi in this tank and they didn't spawn for over a year, so they potentially were the same sex. But now, however, hopefully they are different sexes and they will spawn for me in the near future. But I think it's only really gonna happen once I take all the fish out or put them in a, their own uh, tank for spawning. Anyway, on to the next tank. Another tank that does feature quite heavily on my channel is this one. This is my grow out tank for my white Alto Lamprologus Calvus, and I absolutely love this tank. These guys look awesome in a large school like this together, and they're just I just love watching this tank. This is probably the tank I watch the most when I come into the fish room. There are some albino bristlenose catfish in here to keep the algae off the rocks. Uh, I, I don't have bristlenose catfish in a lot of my tanks because most of my tanks have breeding trios or breeding pairs of fish with juveniles and those adults are quite aggressive and unfortunately my bristlenose catfish haven't grown large enough to defend themselves yet. So I only really have them with fish that are fry that are growing out. So in here I'm fortunate enough to have some bristlenose catfish in the tank to help me keep the tank looking nice and clean. So I have probably over a hundred 
Yeah, I'm pretty sure there's well over 100 uh, calvus in this tank. And these guys were spawned in March, early March 2020. It's now January 2021. So uh, they were almost coming up to a year old and are passing one inch, almost two inches, some of them. Yeah, beautiful tank, love these guys. If I try to put my hand at the front of the tank, they might school and think they're about to get fed. Uh, some are looking up, here we go. They're noticing that my hand's at the top of the tank. I just love when they face all the same direction and move in one group. They look so cool. But I've just turned the lights on in this tank. They try and, I guess they're getting used to the light being on. Anyway, on to the next tank. So this tank, has my pride and joy fish in it, and it is my white Alto Lamprologus calvus. You see the big male in the center there. He is the big daddy of all the fry you just saw. And uh, yeah, they've spawned for me four times. I've been very fortunate with these guys. I bought an adult pair. They were sold to me as an adult pair, not a breeding pair. So I wasn't sure uh, if I would actually breed them. Bought them in November 2019, and I spawned them in February 2020. So I had to wait a little over three months. Very, very lucky with this pair getting them to spawn. Usually when you buy cichlids, you buy six, maybe eight uh, juveniles and grow them up together. Eventually a pair will form out of those and uh, you'll start breeding fish. But that generally takes over a year to do, maybe sometimes two years, especially in the case of calvus or compressor seps, Alto Lamprologus compressor seps as well. Very, very slow growing fish. Got to have a lot of patience with them. And fortunate enough to buy an adult pair. They weren't sold to me as a breeding pair, but they could have been. And uh, yeah, hit the jackpot with these guys, spawning them in about three months. Really, really fantastic pair. So I can't see the female at the moment. She normally hangs around the back of the tank here when she's not spawning with the male. Um, I haven't seen her today, so maybe she might be in the shell. So I'm looking at the back of the tank. She's, I cannot see her at the back of the tank. And so she is quite possibly in the shell with the male. I can't see though because the male has piled up this sand here quite high recently. You can see it's a little bit wider than the rest of the sand. That is freshly piled up sand here along this ridge. And he's been doing a bit of excavating. So maybe she's in the shell. With my Alto Lampologus calvus, if you've been on my channel for a while now, I have an in-depth species profile on these guys. You can watch the video right here if you're interested in breeding them. Uh, previously when I was breeding them, they were taking three to four months between spawns. And that was because I was feeding them at the front of the tank. Because the female, she sits basically at the back of the tank over here in the back corner, I've been feeding them at the back of the tank and last time they spawned, I got them to spawn within the space of a month. Very, very, very quick. Uh, I was surprised by that. I didn't expect them to spawn that quickly, uh, but they did. So a little bit of a tip for you guys. If you want your calvus to spawn very quickly, feed the female at the back of the tank. And I do think she's in the shell. I can see something dark moving around in the shell. So I suspect I've spawned them for a fifth time. Far out. I can't believe it. Yep, like if you've been on my channel, you would know that they just spawned in, um, in, in late December. Uh, on Christmas Eve, I pulled out 77 fry from this tank. It's now late January and they've spawned again. This is exactly what I wanted. Alto Lamprologus calvus spawning as easily as my uh, Lamprologus ocellatus gold. Can't believe it, guys. Yep, she's in the shell with the male. Wow, I can just see her. Fantastic. There you go. So if you guys want to spawn your Alto Lampologus calvus quickly on a monthly basis, make sure you target feed your female. Wherever she resides in the tank, feed her directly where she resides. Don't bother feeding at the front of the tank if she's at the back of the tank. It will take you months to spawn them. This is the second time I've spawned them in the span of a month. Again, when I was feeding her at the front of the tank, take three to four months between spawns. This time, again, within the space of a month. Unbelievable, can't believe it. Really hope you guys learn from that. 
uh, get your calves on all your uh, compressor steps spawning really, really quickly. Awesome. I can't stop looking at this tank. We've got a lot of other tanks to look at, so we've got to move on. And this is my Neil Amprologus Lalupi tank. It doesn't look that clean at the moment, as in terms of equipment that's in this tank. You can see some airline hoses coming down. There's actually four of those, and that's because I had a cyanobacteria problem in here, and I had to use a product called ChemiClean to kill it. ChemiClean uh, depletes the amount of oxygen level you have in the water. So you have to increase the amount of oxygen you're pumping into your aquarium just to make sure uh, the oxygen levels are sustained enough for the fish to survive. So I'm winning that battle. Cyanobacteria is really disappearing fast off the sides of the tanks. I've only dosed the tank once and I really don't want to dose it any more than that. Since I put the ChemiClean in this tank, uh, I've done two 25 to 30% water changes on this tank. There is still enough of the ChemiClean in this tank to continue to kill off the cyanobacteria. Anyway, enough of the cyanobacteria. What's in this tank? Like I said, Neal Amprologus Lay Lupi. I purchased these guys in uh, mid to late December 2020 and I spawned them for the first time 20 days after I purchased them. They weren't sold as a breeding pair. I purchased four of the Lay Lupi. A pair quickly formed and then they spawned in this tank. This is their quarantine tank and I really can't believe that, that happened so quickly. Now, I had the female fattening up again in this tank and today I come home and notice that she's no longer fat, she's lost a lot of weight and that's because they've spawned again today. So spawned them again twice in the month of January 2021 uh, and you can see the eggs here underneath a cave, a slate cave. So the first time she spawned, she spawned in the terracotta saucer that I cut uh, for her. Uh, four days after I introduced that terracotta saucer into the tank, she spawned in there. But today she's chosen to spawn underneath a piece of slate. And there are quite a few eggs on that piece of slate. Now the first time she spawned, I had the two excess lay loopy in the tank with them. And unfortunately the excess male that I had managed to get into the terracotta saucer, eat some of the eggs and also kick out some of the eggs. So I would have had a lot more fry from that first spawn. And now obviously those two XSA loopies are no longer in this aquarium. So I've got the full spawn. And to me, I don't know, <laughs> visually it looks like there's about a hundred eggs. I could be wrong. There could be more than that, maybe 150. Amazing to spawn them twice in quick succession so soon after I purchased them. And then to have in excess a hundred fry in the span of a month is awesome. And these guys are a fantastic bloodline. Now you can see the colors of them here. They're almost orange. They're becoming my new favorite fish in the fish room. It's gonna be hard to top my white Alto Lamprologus calvus. But yeah, there you go guys, my Neo Lamprologus Lay Loopy tank. So this is a tank with quite a few different species in it. And the interesting thing with this tank is it's got some Malawi cichlids in it. The only Malawi cichlids I have in my fish room. If you've been on my channel for a while now, you would know that I pretty much love Tanganyikan cichlids and that's pretty much all I have in my fish room. However, uh, these guys, the Coinga Golds, I won them in a cichlid raffle and on the same night I won some Neolamprologus tetracephalus with them. So I've been kind of using the Coinga Golds as dither fish actually. Um, yeah, and the other th interesting thing with the Coinga Golds is that they start off life as a blue coloured fish and as they mature they transition into a gold colour. Hence, hence the name Coinga Gold. Now mine don't look like a great gold colour and that's because I have uh, the, pretty much the wrong ratio of fish in this tank. I have five Coinga Golds in this tank and I have unfortunately got three pretty large males and two females and those two females are hounded all day long by the three males. So I would like to sell them, I have, just haven't gotten around to doing it. And uh, you see the most dominant male there coming towards the centre of the tank uh, with the vivid barring down the side of his body. And yeah, he's harassing the two subdominant males and two females in this tank all day long. Uh, but the aggression is quite spreading here because I also have four Ventralis Tritica, a Lake Tanganyikan mouth breeder. You can see the powder blue coloured male swimming around the tank displaying to them to the other Ventralis Tritica in this tank. Now most of you would know with mouth breeding cichlids you want the ratio to be one male to say three or four females or even more females. However, like my Kawenga Golds with my Ventralis, I was unlucky with the juveniles that I purchased end up being three males and one female. So I'm um, quite unlucky there, but all good. Uh, the, the male you see there displaying 
in the center of the tank. You can see he's got the powder blue coloration starting from halfway down the body to his tail and the midsection of his body has that nice black coloration. There is a male in here where the dominance had shifted in the past and his body is completely powder blue. Unbelievable coloration. If I was to sell um, him, I'd be disappointed. It's, it's actually very difficult to tell which of my males is the full powder blue male uh, because when they're subdominant, they basically look gray, unfortunately, so it's hard to tell. They almost look like a female. So disappointing, but that's all good. And the other fish that I've got in this tank are my Gelidochromus regani. I actually have a second breeding pair. And the interesting thing with these guys is that this is a second breeding pair. These weren't the most dominant uh, regani that I have in my fish room. They were, I had six of them in with the first pair you saw. And these guys uh, paired up once I separated them from the most dominant pair. And now these guys are actually larger than the pair I have in my two foot cube. These guys are in a four foot by two foot wide by two foot deep tank. So the tank is quite large, hence they've been able to grow larger quicker. The other thing that I've noticed with the female Regani in this tank, her pattern is very striking, way more striking than the Regani I have in the two foot cube. And her black is blacker, her black bars are blacker than the female in the other tank. And the more interesting thing is that the cream colored coloration that you normally get with Regani on her is actually turning yellow. Beautiful coloration. Her fins have that beautiful iridescent blue trim. And the guys in here have actually spawned a number of times and have actually successfully raised their fry in here with all the other fish in here as well. They've actually got some fry in with them now. There's probably less than 10. Uh, however, they're about uh, just over a centimeter long now. So they've been able to defend their fry in this tank for quite a while. I probably should pull out the breeding pair out of here and put them in their own tank so they can have some peace and breed um, without having the stress of trying to protect their fry from all these fish, but I just don't have the room at the moment. But anyway, I don't really have that many tanks where I have a mix of fish in the one tank, but this is one of those tanks. So guys, this is my Neolamprologus tretrocephalus tank, and I have four adults in this tank. Now, they're the only fish in this tank. There's a four foot long tank by two foot wide by two foot deep tank. These guys need a very large tank and are best suited to be by themselves or other large cichlids. Uh, I've got a breeding pair in here, but I keep the other two that aren't uh, part of the pair in the tank to spread the aggression amongst all four cichlids. Uh, if I just had the breeding pair in here alone, I'm pretty sure the male will kill the female. Uh, he's very, very aggressive and quite large. He's actually torn my hand up when I've tried to remove fry from the aquarium and I've bled. So he's got quite large teeth, very, very aggressive fish. So you can imagine if he can do that to human skin, what he can do to fish. Now, like I said, I've got four in this tank. I've bred them quite a number of times and uh, I won them in a uh, November raffle. Uh, at the same time, I won the Kalwenga Golds, put them in this tank and I've spawned them about eight or nine, possibly even 10 times. I've lost count to be quite honest with you. Uh, the first signs of spawning activity that I had was when the female was spawning by herself. Uh, she'd lay some eggs, obviously they were unfertile. She spawned like that about three or four times until the male cottoned on to what he was meant to do. She was the most dominant fish in the tank at the time. The first time they spawned uh, where there was fertile eggs, the, fem the male had become the most dominant fish in the tank and she spawned where he wanted to spawn, which is actually on the sand bed itself. So obviously they're spawning on the sand bed. They keep excavating that sand bed, that pit. They're digging up and spitting out eggs inadvertently um, and piling them in underneath the pool filter sand. So unfortunately, the first few times that they had spawned like that on the sand bed, they were very unsuccessful spawns, as you can imagine. They did eventually, however, spawn on the bare bottom. The male, you can see how much he's digging he's done. Uh, they actually spawn on the bottom of the tank, uh, on the glass, and some of those babies survived. And I managed to pull out 30 of those fry, raised them up in an egg tumbler, got them to two weeks old, and then they all died. And I did it again the next time they spawned, and the same thing happened. The latest spawning that they had in this tank, they thankfully spawned finally on the rock, on an actual cave. And I decided to let them raise the fry themselves. That was the first time I tr tried to let them raise the fry and the fry just disappeared. I'm not sure what happened, 
Uh, as I said, I've got two excess uh, threats in this tank purely to spread the aggression, using them as dither fish, and they could, they could have possibly eaten the fry, uh, but I do suspect maybe the male ate the fry. Uh, as, as I, and again, as I said, it was the first time I've let them try to raise the fry, so maybe it's gonna take a few more attempts for them to learn how to become good, good parents and raise the fry themselves. So being very patient with these guys who've been on my channel for a while now, you will know how patient I've been with them. I've talked about them quite a lot on my channel in my monthly updates and uh, still hopeful that I will breed them someday. They are a challenging fish to breed. Beautiful, stunning looking fish. You can see the male there is about to attack one of, the, one of the, the fish in the tank. I think the female is this fish right here. That is the one that he spawns with. Uh, she's getting that coloration where uh, she, the, like the white goes a bit dark. You can see he's paying her a bit of attention, kind of displaying to her. But uh, I did have them in here with my Kawanga Golds. I was using the Kawanga Gold to steer the fish, but uh, they were just going crazy in here. And I thought I better take them out to see if you know the male can raise the fry himself uh, with that last spawning. And unfortunately, it didn't work either. So. Anyway, again, not giving up hope on these guys. I'll keep persisting and hopefully one day I will successfully spawn them. Now, these row of tanks at the top are my grow out tanks for my fry. So I'm not gonna show you every single tank because a lot of the tanks have the same fry in them and they look exactly the same. So I'll show you one of each tank. So this tank has some fry in it, obviously, and it's actually got three batches of fry from two different species of fish. So in here are two spawns of my Kawanga Golds from two different females. They both let out their spawns in this tank. They didn't eat the other female's fry, as well as my Ventralis Tritika fry. So there's about 16 of those fry in here as well. I had the Kawanga Gold fry in here for about a week or two while the Ventralis Tritika female was mouth brooding her own spawn and she didn't eat any of the fry. So she spat out approximately 16 of those fry and that's her largest spawn to date. So these guys, are uh, now about a month old and uh, they're quite fast growers compared to my Tanganyikan cichlids. Malawi cichlids grow quite fast. However, the Ventralis tritica, they're, they're Tanganyikan cichlids as well. However, because they're mouth breeding cichlids, they also grow very, very fast for Tanganyikan cichlids. Anyway, so yeah, there's quite a few fish in this tank as well as some um, uh, albino bristlenose as a part of the cleanup crew. And uh, yeah, the tank next to it that you can see um, just has some albino bristlenose in it as well. I'm not going to really show you that tank because there's nothing in it apart from the albino bristlenose and that's quite boring. So I'll go to the tank that's next to that one. Now these are my white Alto Lamprologus calvus fry. They are the youngest fry I have in the fish room and they're from the fourth spawn that the parents had. Now earlier in the video I showed the white calvus adult pair that I have and they're actually on their fifth spawn. That fifth spawn will be going in the tank that you just saw with the next to the Kawanga Golds that, had, that was empty and that only had the bristlenose catfish in there. I'm gonna be doing the same process that I did for these guys that you see on screen right now. Uh, basically, the day I see free swimming fry in the shell, I'll start preparing some nice coral sand, like you see here, uh, some, clean it out, pop it in the tank, get that tank ready for those new fry, and hopefully I'll have as good a success rate as I've had with the fourth batch that I'll have with the fifth batch. So getting ready for that, uh, I'll be expecting to see fry in the next two weeks. But these guys, I popped them out of their parents' tank on the 24th of December 2020. So they're about just over a month old now. Within a month, I've spawned the white calvus pair again. So pretty stoked about that. And yeah, they'll be going in the tank next to these guys. So many of my grow out tanks have Lamprologus ocellatus gold in them. I actually have four tanks growing out with Lamprologus ocellatus gold. And I'm showing you these guys as an example of how they're doing. So if you don't know, Lamprologus ocellatus gold or Ockies, as they're commonly known in the hobby, uh, they're a shell dwelling cichlid from Lake Tanganyika. And when you are growing them out, it is highly recommended that you keep PVC pipe with them so that they feel comfortable uh, like they've got shells in the tank. And the reason you don't want to keep shells with these guys when you're growing them out is for ease of catching them when you are selling them to your local fish store or to other hobbyists. Because if you would have shells in here, you will never get them out. It will take you a very long time to catch the fry. So put some PVC pipe in your tanks. They'll feel just as comfortable in the tank with PVC pipe 
and you can add some elbows or some end caps to the PVC pipe and they'll be fine in those. Uh, and it'll be very, very easy to catch these guys with only PVC pipe in the tank. And this is one of my grow out tanks for my Neolemprologus brevis sunspot. So like my Neolemprologus lacellatus gold fry, I have a couple tanks with brevis sunspot in them growing out. And I'm showing you this tank as an example. At the bottom of the screen, you can see some PVC pipe. Like I said in the Lamprologus Ocelatus Gold Tank, pop some PVC pipe in your shell dwelling cichlid grow out tanks and it'll make your life a whole lot easier in terms of catching the fry out when you're selling them. So these guys are about the same age as the Lamprologus Ocelatus Gold you just saw. Uh, however, they are a little bit larger than them. I find that these guys grow a lot quicker than the Lamprologus Ocelatus Gold. But yeah, there you go. These guys are doing really well. And this is my Albino Bristlenose tank that houses my breeding pair of albino bristlenose obviously and you can probably see on camera on the left hand side of the screen the large male poking his head out of his breeding cave. His bristles are huge and uh, he just looks awesome doesn't he poking his head out of that. Underneath the log in the center is the female she's about here I'm not sure if she's coming up in the video and uh, there are multiple batches of fry are in the tank. The key thing with breeding bristlenose catfish, I believe, is to have a bare bottom tank so you can keep the tank as clean as possible. Pop in a little internal power filter. In all my breeding bristlenose tanks, I have a 600 litre per hour pump in an aquarium this size, which is two foot long by about one and a half foot wide by about just over a foot high. That's more than enough just to sweep the bottom of the tank clean from all their poo. Bristlenose catfish are very messy eaters and poop a lot. They just continually eat and poop all day long. So having a bare bottom tank with a little power filter in there will keep the tank clean. Makes your water changes a whole lot easier, believe me. All you need to do uh, is lower the water level to whatever the amount of water change you wanna do. Pop the bottom of the power filter off, clean the sponge out and pop it back in. I have my sponge filters in here as well for additional biological filtration because the biological filtration of the internal power filter is just too small. Uh, for this size tank and for the amount of bristlenose in this tank. So uh, having an internal power filter in your tanks with the bristlenose with a bare bottom tank will make your life a whole lot easier. Uh, if you go back to my water change videos, you'll see what I mean. If you haven't seen those videos, you can watch them right here. Uh, but I used to really have to avoid sucking up baby bristlenose when I was doing the water changes. Pop an internal power filter in your bristlenose tanks and, or, and have a bare bottom tank and your tanks will be so much easier to clean. So this is a tank that really doesn't feature all that often on my channel and it has my peppermint bristlenose catfish in it. I have four of the guys in this tank and that is all I have in the tank. Usually the tank light is off because all these guys do is hide underneath the driftwood. However, I'm being very patient with them because I'm trying to spawn them. So as I said, I've got four in here and I bought them when they were a little over an inch long and now they're approaching uh, three inches almost. Uh, they're not exactly fast growers but uh, they're doing really well in here and some of them are starting to grow bristles. Now, I'm not sure if you can see it on camera, but there are actually two uh, peppermint bristlenose catfish underneath the log here and they're kind of battling it out for um, uh, that, that spot in the aquarium. I'm not sure if they're trying to spawn. Uh, I've never spawned them yet and I really, really want to and uh, if, if they are spawning well we've captured that on camera but I, I really doubt that that's what's happening here. I think they're just fighting for, it, for the spot uh, underneath the driftwood away from the light because as I said I don't normally have the light on this tank. I just like to give these guys a nice dark environment, feed them, be very patient with them, let them do their thing, grow up and then hopefully I will get them to spawn. So yeah these are my peppermint bristlenose catfish. So I have a number of other bristlenose catfish tanks and I won't bore you with all of them because they are pretty much the same, but I'll quickly go through them. This is a fry grow out tank for my albino bristlenose from the large albino pea you saw. Underneath them, down here, you can see there are two aquariums. And in these two tanks, we've got more bristlenose catfish. So more breeding pairs in here. Actually in this tank here, We've got a breeding trio of short fin normal colored bristlenose that are also producing short fin albino bristlenose, as you can see from the three uh, adults that are in here. And in this tank on the left, we've got long fin bristlenose. So normal colored adults, but all the long fin variety. 
and they're producing four types of bristlenose catfish. So bear with me, they're producing short fin normal colored bristlenose, short fin albino colored bristlenose, but however, they're also producing long fin normal colored bristlenose as well as long fin albino colored bristlenose. So the one type of bristlenose in this catfish tank here are producing four types and I've got five long fin normal colored adults in that tank. So they're my breeding tanks for my bristlenose. And guys, you might not have been aware, if you've been on my channel for a while now, because again, I don't show this tank that often, but I also breed guppies. <laughs> so these guys are my endler guppies. And as you can see, I have quite a few in this tank, but again, guppies always sell. So I've been selling these fairly regularly at my cichlid club. I've also got some Java moss in this tank, so that helps with the nitrates as well as some woolen mats in the right hand corner of the tank. The woolen mats and the java moss help keep the fry protected from the parents because as you know, guppies eat their fry. So if you don't have anywhere for the gu guppy fry to hide, they will get eaten. Started with like not even 10 of these guys and a year later, I've got hundreds, probably thousands in here. Anyway, on to the next tank. So this is the other guppy tank that I have and it has fan tail guppies. So your regular type of guppies that have the big fan like tail. I don't know all the different types of guppies that are in here. I'm not a specifically a guppy breeder as most of you know. I am basically really into Tanganyika and cichlids. So forgive me for that. However, Adam had some beautiful fan tail guppies and I asked him for some and he gave me about 10 a few months ago. And as you can see, the population has exploded. I do like guppies, they're really colorful, beautiful, uh, small looking fish, very easy to care for. There are some beautiful looking guppies in here. We've got very, some, some of them are almost metallic looking. As you can see in this tank, I've also got some Java moss. I don't have any filter wool mats in here, but the Java moss that's grown in here uh, has really taken off and the fry obviously have ample area to hide in. The other benefit of having your Java moss in tank with the guppies is that it provides biological filtration, soaking up the nitrates, using them to grow its leaves. The Java moss doesn't need very intense lighting to grow, it just can grow in very dim lighting as well. Having the Java moss is another staple in the, in the aquarium hobby. You can easily sell that to your local fish stores uh, along with guppies. There's, they are always in demand. And obviously with these guppies, uh, they're, they're a lot more colorful than the antler guppies and they have the big, nice flowing tail that, um, you know, general people who, have a, who want to get into aquariums uh, love, you know, these are really easy to care for fish. They're very, very colorful. They're really eye catching and they're easy to breed. So, and they're cheap as well. So they are a mainstay in the hobby. As I said, there are a mix of different types of species of guppy in here. And uh, it's interesting to see what uh, it gets produced by, by having them all mixed up like this. And some of the larger males you see in here have been born in this aquarium. So it's been nice to see them develop over the last month and a half, uh, two months, to, to see what you know, colors I'm getting out of this lot of, of guppies. So over to you guys. I'd really like to hear from you and see what is your favorite fish that I have in the fish room or your least favorite fish in the fish room. Also, I'd love to know what is your favorite aquarium that I have in the room or your least favorite aquarium. Another thing I'd love to hear feedback from is about what types of species of fish you'd like to see me breed. Uh, I'd love it to be around Tanganyika and cichlids, but if there is something out there that you'd like me to give a try, please let me know in the comments below because I will look into it. Anyway guys, I really think this video has gone on long enough. I really hope you enjoyed it. If you did, please hit the thumbs up, comment and subscribe buttons and even share the video if you can. I really would appreciate it. Anyway guys, I'm gonna wrap this video up now. Thanks heaps for watching and I'll catch you in the next one. Bye.